Yo, what is up guys and welcome to episode number 2 of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode here for round number 2 of season 1. Uh, if you did miss out the last video where we started our own my, uh, our own team and we did Bahrain as well, then there will be a link in the top right hand corner of your screen. It was a very eventful race where we had our very first red flag of the season. Um, so yeah, check that out, link will be in the top right. But as we head now into the next round will be Australia as at the time I made this save I couldn't get Jeddah to work. However I have got Jeddah to work now so next season there will be Jeddah. Uh, Jeddah will be in the season. Uh, as you can see on screen we are doing uh, activities. I've decided not to do durability department focus only because it will It'll boost the morale for durability, but I don't want to lose morale for the other departments. So, and I think we've already got morale low on uh, powertrain anyway, after what we did before Bahrain. But yeah, and also if you missed out on Bahrain, uh, we had an ERS glitch as well, where at, this, at the red flag restart, we uh, the ERS was stuck on deployment for the whole lap which kind of hindered us a little bit in progress but as you can see we do purchase we purchased uh, a failed durability gearbox upgrade which did fail as I loaded back in for the second round after Bahrain but as you can see we did we did finish in a strong P14 as our teammate Dennis Hauger did DNF in that last race on the final lap um, he DNF'd but yeah, Red Bulls are looking dominant at this time um, as we now go into a uh, personnel department event uh, and we decide to increase Hauger's pace. Now, I kind of wanted to do awareness so it doesn't go for stupid moves. Um, as we now, are we stopping at 13? No, we're going to keep going. That gearbox should come on that was that was a failed upgrade that we purchased oh the floor failed the rear downforce upgrade that we had on failed ah uh, that's a shame um so we're going to repurchase that straight away as we do have enough r d points we don't have any more r d points to spend we do have two powertrain upgrades and a chassis upgrade as well so let's see do they come on the car oh no it's not looking good oh it's def it's definitely not looking good that rear downforce was repurchased so that was definitely going to come on. Um, now, what I'm going to uh, what I would do is I'm going to do both the power train upgrades because uh, they'll get on the car for Baku, and Baku is a sprint race, and it's also a very you need a lot of engine power as well. Uh, and we'll do the chassis upgrade either between practice and quali or after the Australian Grand Prix itself. As we now go into an aero department uh, d department um, thing, we are going to decline it because, as you can see, if I agree, we do get a discount on the rear downforce upgrade, which is new, but we also get morale uh, decrease, which is not really what you want. As we have now arrived at the race weekend, but before we do head into the race weekend, I'm going to purchase another facility upgrade. Now. This is the reason why I picked pace in the personnel department event earlier on in the video. Because I'm going to purchase a fitness center um, department upgrade. Because then it will improve Hauger's racecraft awareness and focus stats. So it was kind of a good thing that I went for pace. Because A, we can't afford to do the simulator upgrade. But we can afford to do the one that does awareness. Pretty hot laps, I'm not going to bother with. They're kind of just a waste of time, honestly. There's no new supercars or anything to show off, so let's get. So we're straight into the race weekend then, and that uh, and the weather forecast is that there is rain for Saturday qualifying, but it does look like the rain will hold off for sun for the race on Sunday. As you can see, track accommodation again, lap two did it again, purple score, absolutely fantastic. Now, tyre management, I don't know why there isn't a line. It seems very odd that there isn't a line. But coming to the final couple of corners, 
first try and we do get the purple score and we do it easily as well on the delta as I did lower the AI back down to 90 just to do the practice programs and it was quite easy to do. Um, now hopefully this video is slightly shorter, honestly I don't think it will be. It will be shorter than race 1 um, but it's, it's, not it's longer than what I want it to be uh, as we now could finish off the race strategy as I think probably from the next race I probably won't show qualifying or I'll just show race strategy because I feel like you kind of know how practice programs work to be fair so there's not really much point in me showing the other practice programs I may as well just show the race strategy and um, and the the telemetry so tire wear is uh, just under the expected which is good lap times that fourth lap I did get impeded by somebody um, which was a bit of a shame but as you see we've got 1125 R&D points and actually I got all the practice programs on objectives completed in FP1 so I didn't actually have to do quick practice which is good because we can save wear on the engine uh, as well as we get the get um, some development boost applied. I should really speed this up. Um, I did do it in my last series, but I just completely forgot to do it um, in the first couple of videos. But I will definitely speed uh, remember to speed it up. Uh, it just makes the videos a lot quicker. Uh, also, I have now upped the AI to one o four because. I feel like we're still kind of out of position um, for like being on a hundred as Bahrain, but I think it's just because uh, Bahrain is a good track for the AI. But as you can see, the rain is falling here for Saturday qualifying. Um, as I'm not very good at the wet, I have to say, I'm 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 more of a dry race person, but. As you can see, the end of the first lap, we go a little bit wide, make, just trying to find the grips uh, of the of the setup. Maybe as we get a big tank slapper coming into the final corner, and just getting used to the wet weather driving again. I'm still on no assists. I haven't changed any of the assists since last episode. Um, also, the setup wise, I've as we go very deep to start the the start of the lap. I forgot that was my what that was my out lap still. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we go very deep, which probably puts us a lap. Uh, it's not really going to put us a lap down, but it's going to put us a good. It's going to put us like it's not. We kind of wanted a first lap, but so I just called the engine off, even though we didn't use much battery. Called the tires off, and again we go a little bit wide at that same corner as we did on the out lap. As we come through the final couple of corners, you see we're ten seconds up, but that's not a representative delta. Af once we cross the line. On this occasion, it will we will get a representative de uh, delta as we come across the line and we go P6, which uh, and we are, we're in seven tenths off Sonoda. But as you see, we do get a little bit impeded there by Esteban Ocon. Now I didn't see if he did get a penalty for it, but as you can see, we're nine ten we've lost nine tenths alone just by getting held up, held up by Esteban Ocon as. We cut to the end of that lap, and as you see, I've managed to claw back some time. I managed to claw back a mat, like pretty much that full deficit that we had of a second. And now we're only a one tenth down as we come into the final couple of corners, taking this corner a lot better. And you can see it all the time that we've gained at least a good two tenths or so. Lose a little bit more into that final corner, but there you can see we gain a, a good two to three tenths just alone on traction out of the final corner into the into the final and through the final corner. Uh, as we cross the line and we go P10 um, which is pretty good and we're going to go for another lap and as you can see there we've already gained 9 tenths to a second that was just because we got impeded by Esteban Ocon and that's just how much time that we lost um, as we now well actually no I think I think this qualifying is on 100 I think and then I upped the AI to 104 for the race so yeah, but to be fair, we are still behind our teammate, but we, we, we are six tenths faster than in the first sector. As this was my best lap in Q1, and we're on the lightest fuel. The tyres are nice and 
warm, I'd say. We are P17 currently. Um, as Mark tells us that we are in P17, but we're up by one and a half seconds. Um, it just shows how much the track is maybe uh, maybe could be drying up, but you never know. It might just be tire temperature and just getting that just having that extra grip maybe with other drivers setting laps as well, um, showing pretty much a racing line where most of the grip will be. As we come through the final couple of corners, we do lose a little bit of time, um, but we then we do gain it through this final corner as we just have the grip and able to get the traction down a lot earlier as we improve by 1.8 seconds and we go P2! Only three tenths behind the Ferrari and that was an immense lap to get up into P2 and as the session finishes we we just came back to the pits, we didn't bother going out, I did risk and we finish Q1 P3. Wow. Maybe the AI is still too low. But then again, I just said that we're going to change it. As Dennis Haggard does get knocked out, two seconds off the pace. He's one, I'm 1 1.7 seconds faster than him. That should not be happening. But then again, it is probably down to setup. But anyway, we go into Q2 then, starting a first lap, went a little bit wide, which probably could compromise us as we do get a bit of a, uh, a slide going on through the final corner uh, to start the lap. And I think we're going to show all of the lap, I think. So as we go down to turn one, you want to go fourth gear, shot up to fifth um, on the exit just to get that power down. Also, a new um, it's not really a new trick, but a trick that really does help, especially through slow speed corners, is putting your ERS deployment into none um, when it's wet. It helps a lot, and it also it reduces wheel spin. As this first sector has been pretty pretty good to be fair apart from that little slip uh, coming out the final corner to start the lap but we do set a 31.6 I think that was in the sector 1 as we now come down the back straight and we skip towards the end of that lap through the final corner and where is this going to put us uh, it's going to put us P3 as we go P3 and as you can see, I, I get a little bit of a moment out of turn two. I think I just went a little bit too early on the power, and you see we've lost three tenths already. And this end of this lap, I just backed off. I just cooled the engine down, cooled the tyres off a little bit. Uh, and we have dropped to P6. We were a second off Perez, who is currently top of the session. As we now come to start, lap three. And this, I think... I don't think it was my best lap. Um, I think that comes later on in the session. But as you can see, we go none. We do cover that curb a little bit too much. And we do a similar thing to what we did on the uh, on the second lap. Before we got... Before we backed off. But this time, I do go into second just to get, try to get the car slowed down. And then try to show up to third on the apex. And then here, we are a tenth up though. So, uh, that's pretty good as we now come into turn uh, 6 and 7 we get a little bit of a snap on the exit that does cost us our time and we now come into the final couple of corners you see we're still down on our time but it's less than a tenth and now we are a tenth down but through this final corner we know there's time to find and there it is we have found that tenth that we need but we're only going to improve marginally are we? we do we only improve by a couple of thousands of a second as we now go on to our uh, second consecutive lap and as you see we've already found a tenth to, to two tenths already just because uh, that was just um, being more patient on the throttle and being smooth on the power as well and also getting a good apex as well as we now finish sector one we are currently two and a half tenths up and we are actually purple in sector one in on this lap already as there is a Mercedes of I think it is Lewis Hamilton as we're getting a little bit of a and you can see we're six tenths up already going into sector two could this be a surprise Q3 appearance for 141 Racing F1 team in only their second race in 
in, in Formula 1 as Hamilton does get out of the way on the back straight but we do have to he does have to back off a little bit we, he does compromise our line a little bit going into turn 10 or turn 11 I can't remember what turn it is I think it's turn 11 and we do get a little bit of moment there on the grass and we do lose quite a few tenths as we're now only three tenths up two tenths up maybe make that as we come into the final couple of corners I decide to struggle to fourth gear just to try to get power down a little bit earlier and we do gain a little bit of time back but we are going to only improve by two tenths but that is going to put us p7 in this qualifying session but i think there is definitely more time to find but p7 i'm going to risk it and i'm going to see if we do get through and we do nobody was able to improve apart from i think hamilton improved slightly but he wasn't enough to get to overtake us so we finish q2 in p7 and we get into q3 speaking of q3 here we go for our first lap and we get a big tank slapper out the final corner already doing pretty well in this not doing pretty well with first runs in uh in qualifying here from australia as we now go into uh into turn three you want to break about the 100 meter board again as carlos Sainz does a 128.3 as we go th towards the end of sector one and now we're going to skip to the end of the lap well actually not to the midway part of the lap and we take the fast left right chicane of turn nine and turn ten i think and we go a little bit wide we took turn nine pretty well but we just got a little bit understeer which kind of compromised the line through turn ten into turn eleven I think it's turn 11. I don't know the turns. One, two, three, four. Anyway, but we go. But we now come into the final couple of corners, um, and we're now in through the final corner. As you can see, I'm still doing the same tactic as what I was doing in Q2. As we come across the line, and it's going to be a one minute thirty point zero, which is only P9. But by the end of the session, we do get dropped down into into uh, into last, as we now go into uh, as we now come to start our final lap here in qualifying. Now we need a good lap, but to be honest, I'm only expecting P10, so um, we'll see as we come into turn one and turn three uh, as. We're already a two tenths up, so let's see. Do we get a good run through turn three? Let's have a look. We do. Yeah, we do. We gain a couple of tenths there on the exit just for traction, and I did put on a fresh. I think I put a fresh set of inners on. If not, it's the same set that we were using earlier on in the Q3 session. As the inters do take about a lap or two just to get into their optimum uh, range, as we're already six tenths up. Uh, on our previous best but is it going to be enough to maybe get off the bottom the the fifth row of the grid are we going to improve to maybe the fourth or the third row we are a tenth down on russell which means that we could be faster than lando norris at esteban ocon maybe even fernando alonso so we could be as high as p7 at this moment in time as we come into the f uh, into the tricky 90 degree right hand corner it it always throws me off a little bit just for breaking it was difficult on f122 and it's still difficult here on f123 to get a little bit of a snap through the corner we go a little bit deep into the penorba corner and we now come to the end of the lap and i could have gone again i can't remember if i did but i probably bowled and we improved by eight tenths so we do go p8 but by the end of the session esteban Ocon does improve and we finish p9 in qualifying which to be fair, it is kind of a surprise, like a shock. To be fair, because Lando Norris in that McLaren, we are kind of fighting them um, in this uh, in this season, as they are only slight. I think they're only slightly ahead of us in the uh, performance chart on paper, but it looks like that Lando Norris and myself, the first team drivers for their respective teams, made it through to Q3. As you can see, we do gain some acclaim, but yeah, and we also get to acclaim level four, which is very good. As we now, um, 
as yeah, qualifying did go well. The wet conditions seem to suit our car, but let's see if we can tr if we can uh, make that if we can try and um, carry this the uh, the momentum into the Australian Grand Prix. This might not be the season opener anymore, but it's no less an event. So welcome to Albert Park for the Australian Grand Prix. The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. It's a combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners, making it a very tricky track when it comes to overtaking. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Russell, Perez, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, the owner driver, Norris, Stroll, Magnussen, Gasly, Bottas, Albon, Sonoda, Joe, Halger, De Vries, Hulkenberg, Sargent, Hulkenberg. And now it's time to head down to the track. And what would any Grand Prix weekend be without the one and only Natalie Pinkham? Why don't we kick off by discussing Max Verstappen? What a quality performance. The big question, though, is how does that translate on race day? Can they hold on to that lead? And, of course, it's looking very close here today. A lot is going to be riding on those first few corners. And then the question becomes, who can manage their tyres so they're in a good position to push hard towards the end? Right then, so here we go then. We're not messing around today. The strategy is a bulk standard, medium hard pit stop strategy. We're going to be pitting about lap. I think it's like lap 12, lap 14 or something. Um, as you see, Stroll behind is on the soft, so he could get a good start from P11, as we are starting from P9 today, with no grid penalties. Um, apart from Oscar Piastri, the home favourite, taking a grid penalty, he will be starting from the back of the grid. As we come to the end of the formation lap then, here from Albert Park, um, we'll see if we can get a good start on our medium tyres. As we this time we do get purple, we get very a very good score. Uh, we get 0 0.1 meters. As the rest of the grid is forming up here, down under. As we now go to five red lights for round number two of my F123 My Team Career Mode series in season one, and it's lights out and away we go, and we had a good start. We don't really get a good start, we get a good launch, but we don't get a good second phase. Neither does a Fernando Alonso, but Kevin Magnussen, what a start from him. Sending it right down the inside of Alonso and myself. As we drop down to P11 already before turn 1, and Lance Stroll is going to have a look round the outside, going into turn 2. And he does get the move done, we're down into P12, and now Gas is having a look down into towards turn 3. But we're going to send it back up the inside of Lance Stroll, he's going side by side with Lance Stroll. Right now, as we go down through turn 4, and... We're gonna try and maybe stick with him. We let him go, and we get all over that curb. We not that's not really an ideal line to take. It's now Gasly. Maybe through this long back straight, we need to deploy as much battery as we can. But we don't decide to. Now we do, but it's too late to deploy the battery. As Gasly's already overtaken us, so we're down to P12, and now Bottas is coming down around the outside. But we just fend off from him. Is I'm gonna look down the inside and turn nine to be a Gasly. Oh my God, that was a ballsy move that was you would not see that in real life but it's the game so you can do what you want as we now come to the end of lap number one and it looks like a red bull is leading the way uh, followed by both the ferraris so maybe uh, the red bulls were kind of struggling yesterday or as max verstappen does lead the way at the end of lap one as Bottas is now maybe looking for a move, but we've already dropped that one second to stroll on his soft compound tyres. And we get all over that curve, which we took the curve at the wrong angle. As we're now on to lap three now, and it's still the same, but Stroll and Magnussen are now having a, they're going side by side with each other, fighting for P11, or for P10 even, for points. 
as they do get, as Stroll does get ahead of Magnussen uh, on lap three. And now, are we going to get the dose of DRS? I think we will, because the texture point is there. We just passed it, and we are within one second, so we are going to get the DRS, which means we can defend from Valtteri Bottas if needs be, but I don't think it will last for long as we do get two zones of DRS from that detection point. Same with the one going into the penultimate corner, into turn uh, 14, I think, or 13. But now we come down and into the penultimate, into the tricky right-hander as we get it all crossed up out of turn uh, 11 as we now come through turn 12 and into turn 13. Are we maybe going to have a look? Uh, is Sonoda really going to have a look? No, but I get sidetracked. Going into turn 9, that's not a place you really want to get sidetracked there. And uh, Sonoda does have a look as we did clip the wall there. Fortunately, I don't think we did get any damage um, off that. As, Bot as Bottas and Sonoda are now going side by side through turn 11. As we now come through the final... Uh, into the final corner and it looks like we've got the second gap so we are safe but I think Bottas may have got DRS to the detection point because it's before the penultimate corner as we now go on to lap 8 and as you can see the the gap has definitely shrunk uh, no not shrunk increased compared to Sonoda on those soft tyres and we're actually gaining on Kevin Magnussen on the mediums so it looks like we do have slightly better tire wear maybe than uh, the people around us as we now uh, as we are leading our teammate by a significant margin as we get some sort of comms issue as Mark doesn't reply to me with a driver behind, but then I say driver behind and does driver in front. You see, we are now probably suffering with tyre wear. as Mark didn't really tell me that specific information that I needed but that might have been because Bottas and Sonoda were going side by side um, through that section as Mark was telling me but yeah they, it looks like the soft tyre runners may be doing a one stop strategy as the leader of which I think is Max Verstappen he's been very dominant this race I haven't really said much of him I've been concentrating on RPOV and fighting but he's into the pit lane as he did start this race on soft tires we get a big moment out of turn 12 just to uh, put the throttle down a little bit too early and Stroll is in as well as he is going to go on to a set of the medium tires and go to the end and we do come out ahead of we do we are ahead of Hamilton but this is something that yeah the gap's 3.6 seconds. This is how OP fresh tyres are compared to worn out tyres like mine. You see that gap was 3.6 seconds. He basically gains on me so much um, by the time I pay. You can see that he's already gained half a second on me just through the first sector alone. There's now, he's, the, he's just gaining so much time compared to me as his tyres are now up to temperature, his fresh mediums are now up to temperature mine, my tyres are still they're very worn, they're like 46% worn at this moment uh, I think they're like probably like 40% 43, 44% worn at this uh, at this stage in the race yeah, I know what to do, I'm going to let him go because he's, so, he's not part of our race as you see the gap is now 1.8 seconds, you're just gaining like so much time and that's just out of traction zones as well, just because we can't, like we don't quite have the, we're just not able to get the traction down as quick as like I pause, I could, 
um, when my tyres were fresh. As you can see, Hamilton's still within that DRS range. And as you can see, his team has... We're ahead of his teammate Russell. But Leclerc, as you can see, he's gone to the hard tyres. As I think he did start on medium, so he's trying to do the undercut. He tried to do the overcut on Max Verstappen, but it didn't work. As you can see, Hamilton flies by. And I thought, I'm going to try to stay with him. But look how much he pulls away. Literally, just through three corners, he's already broken the DRS on me. Through three corners. That's just how OP, that's just like how good fresh tyres are, performance-wise, compared to um, worn-out tyres. Like ours. And, yeah, the next car is Russell, but we are going to be pitting at the end of this lap. So... Let's see if we can have a good in-lap and see if we can come out ahead of maybe uh, maybe the both has both houses there which are currently uh, I think they're about uh, 16th and 17th respectively I think they put two houses but I think Hulkenberg did have to pit early in the race due to maybe getting damage but here we go then we are coming into the pit lane here in the on the Australian Grand in the Australian Grand Prix, lap 14, and Ocon and Norris follow us in as well. But they've already made their pit stops. They're already onto their fresh set of hard tyres. We are just pulling into our box now, and we are going onto the hard compound tyres. I see Hauger is currently P12 at the minute, but he is yet to pit. He will pit next lap. And you can see we don't quite get ahead of the two Hasses. We are behind them, but Nico Hulkenberg is on the soft compound tyres. And we are ahead of Sonoda by quite a big margin at this moment in time. But remember, our tyres are, uh, are probably going to be cold. So we've got to be careful and try not to lose so much time to Sonoda and Albon. As they are on f uh, fresh mediums. Medium, uh, mediums obviously being the faster tyre than the hards. And theirs are already up to temperature as my hard tyres will take a while to get up to the optimum temperature. They'll probably take about half a lap to a lap. As you can see, by the end of lap 15, Alex Albon has already uh, got within that DRS range. As Dennis Hauger is now in the pits, he's going to be going on to a fresh set for the hard compound tyres. And the gap to Nico Hulkenberg on those soft tyres, but he will be pitting again. Uh, his force is about 3.7 seconds, so we need to try and bring that gap in. But... I don't think we can as we're getting pressured by Alex Albon so we are getting forced to push a little bit uh, this time we, we we haven't had any um, glitches so far with the ERS or anything so far this race but it's literally just pure, down to pure pace and the hard tyres aren't uh, are durable but they're just not quite the good tyre as of yet as Albon does go up the inside but he locks up a little bit and we just sneak down the inside uh, on lap 17 and we are back up into P13 as Hulkenberg we have gained a lot on Hulkenberg but I think Hulkenberg will be pitting in the next couple of laps um, and I think he has to go onto the mediums or maybe go onto another set of softs we don't know yet but as you can see Albon is coming at us down into turn 1 he's going to send it down the inside we're going to try to go for the switchback and we actually get it work. We get the car slowed down to the apex and we get the power down nice and early. We do run a little bit wide. But and now Yuki Sonoda with a DRS. But Albon had the DRS. So Albon's go Albon is going to go and we make a little bit of contact. As Sonoda tried to look around the outside of turn three. We make a little bit of contact. Just went a little bit too late on the brakes. Um, going a bit. Uh, locked the rears a little bit. But an Albon is through and into P13. As we now try and maybe look for a pass back on Alex Albon down this long back straight we don't have much battery to play with we only had about 28 percent and now we're gonna let the drs and the slipstream do the rest of the work let's see down into turn nine are we gonna maybe look for a move no we're not we're gonna stay behind and we're gonna see if we can get a good exit did we get a good exit mm, we kind of get a good exit compared to albon we stay with him but the drs and the ers is a little bit of ers in the slipstream we're gonna have a look around the outside in turn 11 but he's cut across in the braking zone he's gone deep and we go back down the inside of turn 11 and we go back up into p13 this is great racing so far from from myself and alex albon and also sonoda joining the fight as well as we headed down into turn three on the previous lap as now 
all we have to do is because we were ahead as Nico Hulkenberg did hit on that last lap so we're now fighting for P12 as lap 19 now we're not going to use much battery and Albon is gaining he is gaining he's gaining we're not going to make, make the last mistake as what we did when Sonoda tried to have a look down the inside of us into here but we don't get a good exit we get a lot of wheel spin and now Albon could look for a move here he's going to go around the outside into turn 11 we're going to let him go and we're going to see if we could stay with him and maybe get him into turn 1 or if not it'll be turn 3 so let's see if we get as Joe has got some sort of mechanical problem and it looks like he does he's got a, he's got a, a right rear puncture uh, I don't know if it's because his hearts were just so worn out but as you can see he's limping back to the pits and the car is on an angle and the puncture animation is still the same as always it's not really going to change I don't think um, but actually for some reason it looks like it's one of the front tyres but as we cut back to our POV as Joe is suffering with that puncture um, we're going to see but we didn't quite get a good exit out of the final corner can we get close enough to maybe make a move on Alex Albon no not quite into turn one and we just get very close to him before the apex and we just can't quite get the exit so can we maybe look for a send it into turn three no we, we just hang back a little bit we may look and wait for the for the long main straight as we now come into turn number five and then through turn six and turn seven we go end of sector one we start sector two on lap 20 of 29 of this Australian Grand Prix as we're now very close the gap is two tenths to Alex Albon his tyres are definitely starting to fall away as we've opened up DRS and it's that smoke coming out of our car it is the smoke our engine's gone we've had a mechanical failure as you can see our engine is red on the MFD and that is pretty much race over for us here down under in, Aus in Australia and we paid the price Hauga had his mechanical failure on the last lap at the end of the penultimate lap going on to the last lap in Bahrain and we paid the price and we get a mechanical failure of our own here for one for one racing F1 team it's not a good start to the season with a P14 and a now a DNF Another superb Australian Grand Prix comes to an end then, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Max Verstappen's excellent result today sees him take over as the new leader of the driver's championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Natalie Pinkham, come on, who do you pick? Often my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. And pulling further ahead in the standings, it's Red Bull. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend for them as they fight their way towards the top. 
And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Right then, so there you have it then, guys. Uh, that's the Australian Grand Prix. A difficult race for us, really, with that, suffering with that mechanical failure. Um, with only, like, nine lap, ten laps to go. We were doing, we were doing quite well, to be fair. We were fighting Alex Albon for P13, uh, which then became P12, as, uh, Hulkenberg had to make another stop. As I think he was the only one that was on the two stop. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it was a pretty, a pretty difficult race to swallow, really. Our first mechanical failure of the season, we will probably have to look into that. But also, Nico Hulkenberg did retire from the race as well. As you can see, we, we drop all the way down to P17 in the driver's standings and the constructors. We are currently P10. But, yeah. And now, at this moment in time, I thought the video wasn't long enough. So, um, we're going to be doing upgrades as well. So this isn't going to be the end of the video, um, although really realistically I should have, but I've already recorded it and I've already advanced, so and I can't be bothered finding it. So, yeah. So we're going to do the upgrades um, right now. After we've done all that, I don't know why I sat on this screen for ages. That's probably why it's the longest amount of time. Um, but yeah. Dennis Haug did have a good race as well. He finished, I think he only finished like P17 or P18, but all we can say is at least he finished the race. Uh, this time he didn't get done hard by the game um, and having another mechanical failure in the latter stages of the race. Um, but now as we head back to the Team HQ, we do get some weaker resources and stuff and straight away to confirm we we'll do activities first. Again, we get that durability department focus. I don't really want to do that because it's just going to put um, it's going to put morale low on other departments. Um, as I can see, we did get my calculator, but we did get an extra three hundred and twenty R and D points for that. So, and as it confirms, it was the turbocharger that went pop in uh, during that race. As we're going to put a new one on, and we're going to straight away get into upgrades, and we're going to. Uh, do that minor cable assembly upgrade, that weight reduction. Um, and we're also going to do a turbocharger upgrade, um, just so then maybe it doesn't do anything. And we're also going to purchase a rear downforce upgrade. It's still only a minor one, but it should unlock a major, maybe in the next round, uh, if that comes onto the car. Now, we're going to advance time. We get the fitness center spec one, which means that uh, Dennis Hauger's racecraft and awareness has gone up by plus five. So now he is on, um, I can't remember if he's like 67. Did we get some upgrades then? I think we did. Yes, we did. We did get two, I think it was those two powertrain upgrades. So that is still good. We're still waiting for uh, a few more, three more upgrades to come on. As you can see, the two um, powertrain upgrades do come on to the car for Baku, which is very good. As now we are just waiting for that cable assembly, which does arrive, as it was a zero percent ch chance of failing. And now the beam wing is that going to arrive? Um, we don't know yet. We're going to per. I think we're going to purchase another upgrade. We're going to purchase the weight re redistribution upgrade are we and we have to wait so the next facility upgrade that we may be able to do as we're already running out of upgrades to do we pretty much now ran out once I confirm this to go on the car which I'm not going to we need to get to spec one on the chassis um, to unlock some more upgrades which is already um, maybe falling into our hands maybe of the reduced cash rate because we don't really get a lot of cash. We only get 35.5k cash per weekend. Uh, which isn't a lot. As we're going to do that weight redistribution upgrade. So now we can't do anything on the chassis now if that comes on. But now we've reached Team Acclaim level 5. We're going to sign a second, our first secondary sponsor. Now, oh, I don't want... 
I, I don't really want ones like achieve a finish or something. I just want an easy one that we could like get gives us a good amount of money and also like is able like it's achievable. Um, as I think we're probably going to look at uh, maybe we don't have a rival yet, so we can't really do the rival sponsors. But I think Zaynetto, it sounds doable to qualify in P15 or better because our qualifyings have been a lot better, but I may up the AI, so I don't know. But I'm going to push myself and maybe if we get into Q2 a couple of times, then that is good. So we're going to sign with Zaynetto uh, for 77 days as our rear wing upgrade does come on the car. That's the first time that happened as now uh, we've got a marketing department event and it's trying to choose a rival between Valtteri Bottas or Nico Ekenbach. I've definitely butchered that. I know. Yeah, I definitely have. But uh, in other words, we are going to go for Nico Hulkenberg. Um, yeah. As now we're going to advance. Uh, do we get the turbo? Yes, we do. Looks like luck is on our side this week uh, b between Australia and Baku. As again, I'm just going to skip the Friday hot lap because we don't really care. Uh, but we're still only the second worst team. But that's where I'm going to leave it today, guys. So if you have enjoyed, then leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one where we come back for where we go to Baku for the first sprint race of the season and the series. Peace.